and welcome to the Heart Leader Podcast, where heart and mind align. I am your host, Amber, and to wrap up this amazing month of discussing ego, we have co-host Austin Yule. We're going to take some time because we've had so much feedback over the Ego Alignment Journal, so much positive feedback where folks are really interested in ways that they can use it from our Heart Leader Toolbox, that we just really want to take a few moments to dive into that a little bit and just kind of show different ways that you can use the journal and different methods and then adapt it to make it your own. We also wanted to take some time to just discuss between the two of us some of the amazing guests that we had this month who gave very differing and unique perspectives on how ego and aligning ego has impacted their lives. From Rangina Hamidi, who has spent a large portion of her life speaking for those whose voice has not really been allowed to be out and spoken, to Tracy Pryor, who is an amazing minister and has created an organization that's all about blending Eastern and Western philosophies in Christian religion. And then we had Greg Kimball, who built a life from being homeless and having made some choices in his life where ego definitely dominated to building this whole life of helping others. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But let's start with the tool. Yes. The Ego Alignment Journal. Yes. We have, it's a really in-depth journal this month where in the past, you know, they're very helpful, but this one has like charts and graphs <laughs> and things where we can really track progress in some ways. Mm -hmm. So, but one of the things folks asked is, okay, since there are so many differing definitions of ego, what is our definition of ego and how did we create this journal based on that definition of ego? Right. So we desired to clarify that and really help folks understand. So from your side, if you want to talk a little bit about the definition of ego, what is the definition of ego that you would say we built this from? Um. I feel, and I, and I guess to me, Greg kind of did hit it really well, saying that ego is different for every person. And so with that in mind, we did attempt to, uh, the two of us, create something that would be um, enough of a foundation that anyone could understand, but still allow for that flexibility, because we're definitely not one to focus on rigidity. I mean, that doesn't make sense. We are all unique and special in our own ways, and we never prescribe to only one thing. So... With that in mind and with that at heart, um, we aligned this journal into really focusing on what we feel like ego is a way for us to understand who we are. Yeah. It's that, and I believe we wrote it in here, it's that mediator it's like that valve that kind of moves between, okay, this is the human me, mm -hmm. and this is my human consciousness and what makes me me, and here's all of what is more than just my human part. Like, yes, it still contains the human aspect of me, but it's my soul. It's all of my, some folks will call it the highest self, mm -hmm. the soul, the, you know, um, quantum consciousness. There are many names that we'll call it by, but it's all of this out here. And so ego is kind of that little valve that lets you know, all right, I'm entering my human now. And so it helps us understand who we are individually as a human outside of you, Austin, me, Amber, my ego lets me know that I'm Amber and you're Austin, but it also lets me know that I am this aspect of Amber and not my highest consciousness. And so there's still some separation. So it's great in that way. Right. So it's like this great mediator that sometimes forgets that it's the mediator <laughs> and wants to take over. 
and start defining everything for us. It believes that it's the soul, mm -hmm. that it's the higher consciousness, that it's the quantum consciousness. And so if we are not careful, sometimes it'll forget that it's like this little valve and it'll suddenly stop opening to something that's greater out here. And it'll be like, nope, this is where the buck stops. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to direct you from this point forward. Mm -hmm. And so that we kind of tap ourselves out or cut ourselves off at that level. If we don't return to, through practices like this or something similar to getting back in contact with the fact that, no, my ego isn't as high as I go. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to reset it. And if I have to, I'm going to pry that sucker open. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to make it happen so that I can experience myself as something more than that. It's beautifully said. And um, just for those who are listening, we do have a video version, which we will kind of be diving into some of these pages here as, as we discuss and as needed. But we'll absolutely do our best to... Uh, kind of describe the pages so that way if you are listening and not watching uh, you can at least uh, follow along especially if you've downloaded um, this this month's ego journal um, but I really I really love that perspective um, it's you know a valve uh, you know in episode 16 introduction into this we really talked about it being a barometer yeah. in a way for us to understand who we are and you know on a soul level you know maybe maybe we want to uh, be patient, but it's through the ego that we're allowed to the opportunity. We're maybe not even allowed. I think the better term would be gifted the opportunity mm -hmm. to experience what it means to be patient because it's easy to say I'm patient, but when the experience comes forward uh -huh. where you actually need to be patient, rubber meeting the road. Yes. Yes. And, and that's, I feel like is a really good way. Like, okay, what, what is a practical? So we just hit philosophical practically. What is it? And it's that way to understand real time, you know, okay, hey, I'm given an opportunity to be patient right now. I'm driving, someone just cut me off. You know, if I'm practicing patience, am I gonna let my ego take over and be over ego and be frustrated and mad? And, you know, why is this happening, you know, to me and all these kind of things, or, or maybe that might be a little bit more of the under ego, feeling a lack of self-worth or things like that. Mm -hmm. But a balanced ego would, view it from a standpoint of, okay, that just happened. This is being brought forward as an opportunity for patience for me. So I'm going to focus on patience. Maybe I'm going to in, in, introduce a breath technique to help me calm down and really connect. And so that would be a beautiful approach when understanding ego and practicing ways to create balance so we don't get off center. This episode of the Heart Leader Podcast was brought to you by Stephen Douglas. Stephen Douglas is one of the nation's leading boutique search and interim resources firms and has been recognized as a leader in identifying and providing access to top talent for clients since 1984. Whether it's a company preparing to go to the next level or a candidate looking for better opportunities, Stephen Douglas keeps the focus on the needs of the people they serve. They specialize in connecting the right talent to a company's needs while also understanding what the market demands. To learn more about this amazing organization, visit them at stephendouglas.com. Yes, it's a real time thing. Like you have to be aware enough to understand that your ego is the one first <laughs> that would be like, how dare you cut <laughs> me off? What are you thinking? Yeah. Because that's the I separate from you. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm estimating that I know that you were just being a jerk. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking, well, maybe you didn't see me. Or maybe you're in a hurry or something has happened in your day. But either way, it doesn't have to be any of that. Mm -hmm. It could be what you said. That just happened. So what's in that for me? Right. And how can I grow from that? And how can I leverage my ego and then my connection from that to grow? Exactly. So I think that's amazing. And that's a lot of what this ego alignment journal is going to talk about. And great point. If you're listening and you don't have video access right now, the ego alignment journal is available through suibera.org 
on our Heart Leader Toolbox, correct? correct? So if anybody would like to access this, they can for free sign up for the Heart Leader Toolbox. Mm -hmm. And this is one of many resources that are available underneath of that. Absolutely. And um, there's a quick link in the description below here that, uh, you know, whether you're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or anything like that, it's all right there. Make it easy for you. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So we're going to dive a little bit into the journal now because the purpose Perfect. of the journal is to really create that alignment or that flow through the ego, mm -hmm. not giving permission for the ego to kind of cut off that connection between us. Right. But we also need to know what our what our soul is and what our ego is. And so that's a key component of this journal. It's identifying, you know, what are the characteristics and the traits of our soul just that we've noted from, you know, time, experience, people's reports. And the, what are the aspects that are ego so that we can clearly identify when ego is driving and when the soul is driving because both are necessary and we talked about that in the first one it's not as though our ego should always be taking the back seat mm -hmm. there are times when the tool of ego is very very necessary so when then is it the appropriate tool to use and when does it become a weapon or just not the right tool for the job, mm -hmm. right? And so that's a focus. So when we get to the steps to get started on the journal mm -hmm. or contained within it, it walks you through each and every step that you can create using this journal. And first is that understanding of the soul and the ego. Second is knowing your current state so where are you now in accordance with each of those categories between the soul and the ego? Mm -hmm. So that's that, the different aspects that we talked about, uh, vulnerability, right? Mm -hmm. Authenticity. This is where all of those tools that you've practiced up till now really come into play because we have to be willing to be authentic with ourselves to be vulnerable and look at, okay, where am I really in these categories? And to, you know, we're asking you to do it on a percentage basis, right? So we're not asking you to get really down to the letter of this is where I'm at right now to the nth degree. It's like, okay, so maybe 30% of the time I'm here and 70% of the time I'm here. 30% of the time I'm in soul, 70% of the time I'm in ego. Mm -hmm. I want that to change. Okay. I feel my, and that's the next step. I feel where I would like to navigate to my goal state for the majority of the time. Now, there will always be exceptions to that rule. Mm -hmm. But for the majority of my time, I would rather have that in reverse where 70% of the time I'm executing from the soul state and 30% of the time I'm executing from the ego state. And so then you can develop a plan. And then that is your fourth and your fifth step. Mm -hmm. Creating your daily plan and your action steps mm -hmm. to get from where you are now to where you desire to be. So. Very clear. And how you've used it. And do those, is there anything that comes up for you in that way where you're like, hmm. That's awesome, or mm, that's not something I've done, or this is how we could enhance it. Anything like that, or um, at this time, I, I feel I feel it's a strong starting point for a lot of people. I mean, really, what this what I feel this journal is all about is building a foundation centered on awareness. Most of us are just not aware of of where we are with our ego. You know, Eckhart Tolle is great in how he describes. You know. One of, I think one of the first things uh, you shared the book, The Power of Now, that was one of the first books I read on this personal trans transformation journey for me. And and what really hit me was uh, it's like one of the first things he was really struggling in life. And he shared, I am not happy with myself. And he took the time to sit on that for hours and hours. You know, well, if I am not happy with myself, 
that means part of me can shift. That means the I is the, is the very essence of me. We could say the soul in the myself is the one that has the ability to shift and alter. That might be the ego, the yeah. tool, right? And so I thought he did a brilliant job of, of explaining. And that was a great, a great opportunity for me to expand my awareness. Because once we expand our awareness, then we have the ability to seek the knowledge we need and the tools we need in order to get us to where we desire to be. And so to me, this is one of those foundational tools that as these discussions keep going, it expands that awareness and this tool can help us gain the knowledge and the, for lack of a better term, the action steps really uh, to make the shift so that instead of I am not happy with myself, one can confidently say I am happy with myself. Such a good way to come at this mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing that and 100 mm percent -hmm. it's one of those things where no matter what any tool is as useful as our execution of it too right and so for Eckhart Tolle to sit for hours being willing to contemplate a single statement that single statement is a very powerful tool to him then mm -hmm. And so he was willing to dive into one statement that many of us just fly past. Mm -hmm. The depth and the willingness to take a tool and hone it and utilize it to that level, I think is another key part of this. And ego plays a part in that, right? Is my time worth the investment? And we often end up feeling like, oh, our time would be better spent somewhere else, would be better spent here or there or applied in other ways outside of self. But when we start to really take this journey within and connect and understand the infinite treasures that are within, we start to recognize it's not an either or like outside is more important than in or inside is more important than out. It's that. And mm -hmm. it's always that coexistence. And so it allows us to open up to, well, if it's a coexistence from inside out, then isn't it a coexistence from human to non-human? Mm. And so all of these things are, and I am, my ego, I am my human, and I am my soul. I am my non-human. I am Amber. I am everything that's inside, but I am also everything that is going on in my environment because I co-created that environment. Mm -hmm. And so the power that begins to come from each of these practices and that investment that this is not what's happening outside of me is not more important than taking the time to focus inward and what's happening internally is not more important than than what is happening outside of me it's finding that balance right so well said maybe an acronym that could help with time is to invest my energy and we recognize that when we experience time, every time that we experience is within us. So if we can view it from a standpoint that whatever I choose to pay attention to, I'm literally like paying, paying my time towards that, yeah. right? These words are very, very purposeful. Energy and words. Energy and words, right? Um, when we do pay attention and we choose to take time on this, it's always going to be from the inside out, even if there's an illusion that is coming the other way. And so the more intention and purpose we can bring into recognizing that, you know, to invest my energy into something that is going to benefit me so I can shift what's around me so that I and myself are aligned, then a lot of these problems and issues and worries and anxiety that we feel every single day just start to fall away yeah. because it's no wonder that they occur. Because when we have disharmony within ourselves, it's no wonder that there's disharmony around us. When we can create that harmony 
and peace and understanding from within us, what's around us will follow suit. Yeah. So in continuing with the journal and discussing the soul versus the ego, one of the things, and I know we're going to put it up on the screen, so I won't share what we have um, on the piece of paper here, but we go through in this triangle diagram and talk about the soul is on the left hand side the ego is on the right hand side mm -hmm. and the soul is very focused on unity connection community contribution the ego is very focused on control or survival type instincts the eye focus which both of those are very, very important for different reasons, which is why we say understanding when to use each. And then we broke it down to like foundational level going up. So it's how do you view challenges? From a soul level, typically we would say you would view challenges as opportunities. From an ego level, you're going to view them as constraints. Mm. It's something that's limiting you. But from a soul level, it's an opportunity going back to your traffic, mm. right? If you're sitting in traffic and somebody cuts you off, if your ego is looking at it, it's a constraint, right? How dare they do that to me? They just kept me from getting ahead. But your soul would look at it as an opportunity, a growth opportunity, okay? What do I stand to gain from this? How can I do something positive with what has just occurred to me? And so as we navigate through the journal, we ask, okay, what percentage of your time then currently do you spend in that looking at life and the challenges of life from that opportunity standpoint or from that constraint standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Then going up to overall behavior. The soul looks at our overall behavior as responsive. So we're not, we take time, we step out of what is occurring, and we choose how we're going to respond to it. Because nothing is happening to us. Everything is happening with us which means that we can direct it. Whereas the ego is going to look at it and react. It's very instinctual. And again, there are times for instinctual, right? If you're about to have a piano land on your head as it's being loaded into a high-rise apartment, you don't want to sit there and respond to that situation. We need to be able to react. That's survival. Get the heck out of there. Yeah, right? you don't want to sit and ask, why is this no. happening? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't understand. Why is there a piano up there? Yeah. Um, well said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there are times when we need it. And that's why we don't desire to just like kill off the ego or suppress the ego. It right. has to be there. Right. Right. But if you're talking to your boss at work and he triggers or she triggers this survival instinct in you, then being reactive may not be in your best interest. Right. Right. So next we have the life approach. A soul level is internal, where an ego approach is an external one. And we touched on that a little bit already. Like, am I living my life fully from the internal or am I living my life fully from the external or have I found a balance between there? Because both are necessary. Then moving up to identity. How... Do we? We have a friend. We do have a friend. <laughs> I don't know if everyone can hear it, but we just had a friend who desired to share with the identity here. Yes. <laughs> His identity is a bird. Yes, singing, singing with us here. Right into the, uh... 
beautiful. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. Right into the chimney there <laughs> <laughs> for all to hear. I am here. <laughs> From the inside Amazing. out. Um, so identity is all about how we exist, right? Yeah. So is it mission-based mm -hmm. or is it role-based? Mission-based is under our soul level, mm -hmm. which is like your purpose. I'm here. I'm aligning with my purpose. And my purpose, like for me, my purpose is love. Mm -hmm. Everything that I desire to place into my world internally and into the world externally is all focused on love. But the roles from the ego that if we identify ourselves with that would be, I'm a mother, I am a partner, I am a minister, I am these things that are role-based and will stop the moment I leave here. Right? The moment I leave this planet, I pass on to whatever, those are gone. But mission-based, my mission of love is part of my core. It's who I am. And so I bring that forward. Right. If, if I can oh, yeah. build upon that, because I feel like this is a tough one for a lot of people, um, where we feel like you know our mission or purpose is our identity. And the one thing to remember is that, you know, when I'm speaking from experience, I grew up playing golf my whole life. I tied my identity to me being a professional golfer and the results that I had. And it really severely uh, hurt me in a lot of ways and, and limited my capability of understanding who I am because I was so tied to something outside of myself, which is the role that I was seeking uh, to have. And... Um, the one thing we need to remember is that um, unlike our soul or our mission, our purpose, that can be um, the same the whole way through your life. But the identities we have, you know, those change, those adjust as we adjust. And so, for example, you were saying a mother. You didn't start out as a mother, right? You started right. out as a daughter. Yes. Uh, you started out as a child. And so, you know, we have to be aware of the roles that we, that we have, but you could still be love as a child, as a daughter, and then still be in love as a mother. And so that's where when we can really effectively identify and communicate to ourselves the roles that we have and the roles that we are, it's so important. And then we can bring more intention and purpose into those roles through our purpose, through our mission, through who we are at a very soul level. So that I can, for example, you, as I watch you, you breathe love into all the roles that you play. Thank you. And I think that's such a good point because roles can kind of fall out from underneath of us unexpectedly too. Right. So in your case, like being a golfer, that was not something where you were like, okay, I'm just done with that role. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move on to a next. It was abruptly stopped. And so when you tie who you are, your sense of self to a role, mm -hmm. And that role goes away, so does your sense of self. Right. And then you're wandering. Where if you have a strong connection to both things, mm -hmm. you know your mission, and that is a constant, that is steady, that is always there. And you know the roles will kind of flow, they ebb and flow. Then when one gets taken away in some way, whether that's because you've chosen to let it go, or whether it just runs its course or it's taken away, you're not lost. You know that you still have all of this that you are. Very well said. And so that's part of this too. Like how often am I in one? How often am I in another? And the reason that's more toward the top of this pyramid is because so many of us do identify ourselves as the roles that we play. And I did this for the longest time. Like my whole life was really wrapped up in the fact that I am a mother. And so, you know, when that was not, I mean, I'm still a mother, but they age and they get their own lives and they start to move on with that. And so if I didn't have other things, then 
And I could have very well just felt this emptiness in my life. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to balance that. And then the last one is a drive there. You'll see at the top, top and it's, is your drive what motivates you, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Is it focused on vision or is it focused on ambition? Right? So is there, are you a visionary? Are you looking at a larger picture? What is it that is really driving you in that way? Or are you highly ambitious? Are you going after something? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to stop until you get it. And so there are just two different approaches. So ambition is part of the ego. Vision is part of the soul, seeing the bigger picture from the soul level. Mm -hmm. And those two marry so well together. Because if you're going to be ambitious, it's really important to have the bigger picture. Right. Absolutely. Uh, practically, uh, vision might be the, your creative, your being, and ambition may be your actual doing. Yeah. And so it's a really great understanding of how to balance being and doing because both are important. We are human beings. We're not human doings. You know, we say this all the time. And so there is a key aspect. Um, our ambition is inherently limited by our vision. And so it's important to balance and flow between the two because we can have great ambition. But if we don't know what it's going towards, then, you know, what is that? Then what's the point? You know, what is it doing? Nothing yeah. really, not, not anything. We're just kind of, uh, what's it, uh, uh, on the, uh, you're on the hamster wheel, <laughs> hamster wheel. Thank just you. Running yes. in a yeah, circle. Just running in a circle, you know, <laughs> running really fast, going nowhere. Yeah. You know, that's ambition without vision. Right. But you could have incredible vision and have this am amazing ideas. I mean, how many people are out there that have incredible ideas, um, but aren't able to connect to that drive and the, the ethic towards, uh, you know, the work ethic, I, I don't want to use work, but that's just the term. Yeah. Um, but you know, that, that act, the action steps, I think that's probably a better term. Um, to actually accomplish that vision. And so many people, unfortunately, um, and I was there at some point got lost in, Hey, I have this great vision. Why isn't it coming forward? You know, why can't I accomplish what I can clearly envision? Yeah. And so this is, another practical understanding of learning how to balance those two and why it's so important to to accomplish what we desire uh, it's just it can make a world of difference i agree and so in using this the next flow and there is a description at the bottom of that page of what we just talked about there's a written description mm -hmm. on the bottom of that soul and ego diagram page. So individuals can reference back to that, but then it moves into assigning those percentages. Then that's where willingness to be authentic and transparent with oneself really comes into play because we will need to be able to say, okay, here's where I really and truly am and then grow from that stage. And so both of those on the current state soul and ego, there is a section where it has all the attributes down the left-hand side. It has the soul and it has in the middle and it has the ego toward the right in segments. And then it just has a blank area for percentage as opportunities, like views on challenges, percentage of time you see it as opportunities, percentage of time you see it as constraints. And you just fill it in for your current state. And you can take notes at the bottom. There's a notes section where individuals, as you do this, even that can start to bring up kind of some thoughts, some emotions, some feelings that it's helpful to just be able to jot them down. Agreed. And you, you brief, you touched on this a little bit earlier, briefly, where you were talking about, okay, you know, let's say my overall behavior, for example, is that coming from, you know, 30% my soul and 70% my ego or 50 50 or you know is it majority soul am i 80 percent of my soul is coming from the behavior and only 20 percent is my ego there's no right or wrong there's no better or worse there's really just helping you understand where you are 
And if that aligns with where you desire to be, then fantastic. If not, that's okay too. We are human. That's part of the experience is understanding it. And this can give you a, an effective way to, to see where you are and understand where you desire to be and hopefully align those. And if you don't think in percentages, for example, there might be other ways you can, you can kind of use this as a tool, put like one, you know, one to 10 or something like that. Yes. And, and you could put one on one side and 10 on the other or five and five or however that is, or, you know, maybe it's a somewhat never and somewhat always, or, you know, so however you, you feel and connect and understand and learn, it's important, you know, make this your own. I mean, that really is. Uh, you know, that's why we need to create some sort of foundation to be able to at least start the process. But, you know, uh, it's not egotistical to take this and make it your own, <laughs> you know, no, no, no not no. at all. And we encourage, <laughs> we encourage it and share it with the rest of the community. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? We give the base as the starting point, as yeah. you said, just like that phrase for mm-hmm. Eckhart Tolle, it is the space to sit and start to contemplate. But as you contemplate, if you're like, oh, well, this fits better for me, then make the adjustment and or share it with us and say, hey, I would love to see this as a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. Can you adjust the tool and put in a segment that has that? Mm -hmm. And we can always adapt tools as we get the feedback. Yes. Which is the reason we're even doing this video right here is we got feedback. Hey, this tool is fantastic really love using it would be great to hear perspective from you all about the creation of this tool so we have a more in-depth awareness of how to use it right and so we're so open to all of those things and then the next page of this will just be that goal state so taking the same steps from your current state and then understanding hey If I'm not in alignment with how I have been utilizing my soul to my ego, and we're not talking rocket science level, got to get in there to understand the percentages here. Mm -hmm. We're talking estimated percentages. Let's go for darts. Get close to the bullseye-ish can, right? Yes. So where if I'm looking at my identity and I say, Maybe 90% of my identity is role-based and 10% is mission-based. And I feel like that is causing me some discomfort because every time a role falls away, I go through a period of mourning and feeling lost. Then maybe what I would like to do is make that more balanced where it's Mm 50-50 or even knowing that might be too much of a stretch. Maybe I go more for 30-70 Mm-hmm. and start there absolutely and i think you bring up a really great point for people to focus on is that the goal you know when you're looking at your goal state from my perspective you know maybe it doesn't have to be 50 50 all the way through that does not equal balance right. you know that is a form of balance but it's not the end all be all of balance as you just stated 30 70 is balance because it equals 100 percent And so when you're creating your goal state, I just, I feel like that's such an important thing to just remember that it's okay to take small steps. If you're just saying, if it is 90, 10, you know, maybe it's 80, 20 then, and then you can print this out and maybe a couple months later, right? 70, 30 and, and keep, keep building on it and building on it and watch the little bit over time um, until you feel like, Hey, maybe it might just always be 60, 40. And that's what works best for you. It's not exactly 50-50, but it is balanced because it allows you to be the very best version of yourself. So that's, uh, I feel like, just a, an extra little little bonus aspect as, as we're going through this. I agree. And it is fluid like that. And the more mm-hmm. we get used to it being fluid, the more we start to understand how to use it as a tool, too. Yeah. Like once we reach goal state, we may find, okay, that's goal state on a consistent basis. But in this condition, I know I need to identify as my role. Mm -hmm. And so I am going, I have the awareness now because I've practiced enough and I've built out and expanded my conscious connection to this enough that it's easy for me to, boom, I'm focused on my role right now. 
but okay, now I don't need to focus on my role anymore. So I can go back to being part of my mission base. I can be more connected to my mission or I can bring my mission into my role as you talked about. So they're not even that separate anymore, but we have to start first by bringing the conscious awareness and the practice. And that's where we head into next. (laughs) We're getting into creating a daily plan around that. So we've created our percentages and we've seen where we are and where we want to go. So then we can take that and start to create little daily steps that we can just navigate from where we are to where we want to go. Little steps each way. So we have a segment under your daily plan and we give a pre-filled out example for individuals, but this is to be used daily. You pick an area where you desire to focus among the attributes. So self, social, family, work. These are four categories of our life that we tend to spend the majority of our focus, right? So among those four categories, we would look at the attributes, which are the views on challenges, overall behaviors, life approaches, and identity and drive. So taking those and looking at our life in those four categories, we start to say, okay, where am I going to merge and start to take those steps? So if I want to focus on myself right now, under the life category focus, I'm going to choose self how I interact with myself, including my self-talk, right? And then I'm going to say, okay, what attributes do I desire to choose in that? If I'm going to focus on myself, what attributes have really kind of lent to me having maybe negative self-talk or the ways that I am not kind to myself? Maybe I don't have self-care, things that have created this separation within myself. So I might choose views on challenges and my overall behavior as two of them. And then I want to understand, okay, well, why am I choosing those? What's the why behind that? Right? Because if we understand why, then we're far more motivated to keep going. If I'm just arbitrarily choosing it because it sounds good, my motivation factor is not high. Mm -hmm. So when we can connect with that why behind it, then I'm like, oh, okay, I get this. And I understand how it's going to carry me forward to the next step. So there's a section under there that says why I chose to focus on this area. And that's for journaling and writing out. So you can remind yourself and reflect back. This is why I'm choosing it. So if it's negative self-talk, it could be that I chose to focus on how I interact with myself today because I am really hard on myself. I spend a lot of time in negative self-talk and putting others before myself to the point where I am drained and have nothing left to give and end up sick. And then I'm not able to perform in the other areas among the attributes. So I can't give anything more. So once you have that why, we want to understand potential challenges because it's not going to be a cakewalk, right? It never is. It's great to set the goals, but if we understand what the potential challenges are in advance to any of the steps that we desire to take, then it's easier to mitigate them. So we have a section under there that talks about, okay, what are the potential challenges you might face in doing this? So if it's negative self-talk, or being hard on yourself, it might be that um, you might not even notice that you're doing negative self-talk because it's become such an internal dialogue that sometimes it's hard to even cue in that it's happening. Like it should just become your inner monologue. So then you have to find a way to catch yourself in order to shift that behavior because that's your ego in many ways, keeping you from connecting to the soul level. So how can you do that? And then how you will overcome potential challenges. 
And so I talked kind of, I blended those together, but you identify the challenge and you talk about how you're going to overcome it. Right. So if you're going to overcome that challenge, a way to be able to cue in on the negative self-talk is to just set little timers on your phone, maybe, and kind of reconnect with yourself and say, Hey, in the past 30 minutes, what have I, if I reflect back, what have I done? How many times have I said this or this or this, or what are the most common phrases I say to myself? Let me take notes on that so that I know what the most common things I say to myself are, and I can start to find ways to change that. So that is the first step of the daily plan. And then the next step is to create then a checklist based on the action steps from what you've just identified. So in order to going, continuing down that negative self-talk plan, right? I know that I desire to create a better internal connection. So living inside to out instead of outside to in. It's one of those attributes, and that's to help self. Then what I could do to counteract the negative self-talk is to create a positive affirmation. So when I do find myself saying those things, and I've noted the phrase or phrases that I tend to say to myself all the time, then I can counteract that with a positive affirmation that reprograms my brain into a different capacity or we could use something like self pause right right the app that is available through the heart leader toolbox mm-hmm. where we just listen to them all the time and it starts to silence that mm-hmm. right so we go through and we create all of these different steps that we can take in order to achieve what we said we desired to achieve that day and then we, at the end of the day, we can say done or not done because there's just that. There's that fun that comes from being able to go check, did that, or I didn't get to do that. And when you go through at the end of the day, so you've created your, your items either the night before for the next day or in the morning for that day. Then at the ev- in the evening, you go through and you check what you were able to do and you take notes on it. What did you experience as a result? How did it help you throughout your day? What did you notice? Did it shift anything for you? Did people respond differently to you? Like, what are the things that you're noticing? Because that starts to bring consciousness to the process. And that's the flow by doing that little bit every day, by bringing conscious awareness and choosing where we're going to place that conscious connection and noticing soul to ego and where I'm at, then just that action, just that focus begins to allow us to go, Oh, I didn't even know I did that. And next thing you know, you're shifting your behaviors and people around you are going, Hmm, that's different. How are you doing that? And you're inspiring them. And so what was a self thing then becomes a family thing or a career workplace thing because other people desire to follow your lead. Beautifully said. So that's the journal from (laughs) one perspective. Is there anything else that you would add that? Um, No, I mean, I feel like it's very comprehensive, um, but also very practical, which is important because as you said, I mean, it's one thing to philosophically talk about these things, but it's another to actually put them into action. And we need tools like this journal, like even the self pause app that you talked about, which uh, we had a great conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, Jaden and Joe were both talking about how incredible just even affirmations, right, completely change their lives. So if we really start to choose these habits and we start to become aware 
what habits are stemming from our ego, what habits are stemming from our soul. And we can start to understand them at that next, that, that deeper level, then we can start to understand ourselves and evolve throughout our lifetime and really experience the greatest version of the grandest vision of who we are at every level of self, soul and human alike. And when we can do that, I mean, that's, that's limitless potential in action. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I feel like that's so much of what our guests were talking about, too, right. around this. I mean, even Rangina, who has experienced some of the most unpleasant situations that our world has to offer. Mm -hmm. She still holds out this amazing permission and her hope and her drive toward her mission, it shows that even when something outside of self, when roles and identities that are external kind of get pulled out from underneath of you, when you know what home base is, when you know what your mission or your purpose is, you still have the ability to go back to that and find that grandest vision of self. Like nobody and nothing is going to determine my human potential. I determine my human potential. And therefore, I can do that for myself. And I can show you that it's possible if you desire to do the same thing. And so then we become this group that starts to just connect at that level and help each other and lift each other up. And I think she was such a beautiful example of that in all the things that she's done in her life for women, for just cultures and the connection between cultures and helping to understand where others may have just backed out and said, no, this is too much for me. Hmm. If her ego had taken over, she would not have been able to do the things that she did. And so she was able to balance it in that way. And I feel very much the same with Tracy, mm -hmm. where she stepped in and in a very focused and, you know, having been on the receiving end of that myself, I know how passionate people are about the religions or the faiths that they hold. And it's a beautiful gift to see someone so passionate about their belief system. But when that passion turns into a weapon, just like anything else, and we start to crucify others who don't have that same belief then it may represent a misalignment in ego and it can harm those outside of your belief system and tracy did a great job of standing tall in a space where that could happen and from description did happen in many accounts and said there's more than one way and we can all learn things from each other and ego doesn't need to play a part in this information insight and soul connection that's the key across all of this so let's focus on the commonality there instead of the identity that goes along with the ego and i found that fascinating i was so grateful right. for her message Definitely. And, and Greg talked deeply about how important action is. Yeah. You know, he's a, a great embodiment of having vision and action, ambition, drive, and being willing to step between both, to pull back, to have the vision, take that higher level 30,000 foot view and see, okay, what's this landscape? What can we do? And then pull back down into uh, the human self and say, okay, well, this is what I needed to do to actually get there. And you could see his incredible journey flowing through that at different levels. One, you know, even from him, him saying the different levels of ego of being too involved in the human ego and then really focusing on, on the soul and through personal transformation. And then now as a father, kind of blend, being able to blend the two, recognizing that, you know, new life can, can transform all perspectives. 
and isn't that a reality? I mean, uh, birth is such an incredible aspect and, and we have rebirths on uh, almost, I mean, literally every day. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's 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 what wake up every morning, you know, morning and night. That's a great cycle of of, of rebirth. So, you know, we're, we're experiencing that uh, in ourselves every single day. And when we take habits that are no longer who we are and we apply habits that are beneficial to who we are, that is a birth in of itself, too. Yeah. So. As we prepare to kind of wrap up here in these highlights and this discussion of the journal, what are some key takeaways that you have from all of this ego discussion and the flow? And I know that we've utilized the tools. You know, we don't just put them out there. We we practice what we preach, as they say. Yes. Um, so what do you find the maybe top two or three things that you're taking away from this are? Um, having taken the time to dive into a lot of personal growth and spiritual text over the last few years is on my personal transformation journey. So much of it does talk about killing ego and I see the point. I may not necessarily agree in full. I do feel that just like anything, balance is key. And sometimes that if we do kill the ego, it may not be a weapon to others, but it may be a weapon to ourselves. And so we have to be aware of when something is a tool or a weapon, not just to those around us, but to actually within. And I think that's, to me, was kind of like a... a a stepping stone into um, taking a deeper dive into awareness. The more that we become aware of who we are at all levels of self, the more than we can step three, which is take action. And then we can experience ourselves, and we can watch kind of in parallel. You know, we can chew gum and walk at the same time, right? You know, that old <laughs> saying, right? You and know, pat your belly and, pat your belly and rub your and head. This, this whole thing, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, those, those are probably my three big takeaways. Um, you know, so balance, awareness, and action. Those are good takeaways. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I think it's important that we do all have, like, what resonates for us mm -hmm. with all of this. Because as much I love what you just said and it resonates with me but as I navigate through it for me you know coming from the math science part which is probably why I ended up putting percentages in there so sorry for all of the creatives where percentage is not your part I apologize but it helped me kind of step out of myself and look at it from a more observational view of who I am Instead of being inside and feeling like, oh, I need to control this, right? Because that is such a human desire or what we feel we need to do is to direct and control and even navigate through all of the things all of the time. But when we have something where we can have this discussion I was fortunate in that I did come at it from the knowing the ego is important and being able to be in witness of the valve and how it moves, but I still needed to pull out and observe how my human and my soul interacted together. And I feel like this, taking an entire month to dive into ego and be the observer of that gave me the data gave me the opportunity to analyze in a way and then feel into the analysis and understand. I love that. It's brilliant. So, thank you. <laughs> and we would love to know how it resonated for you, what takeaways you have, anything that came up that you are willing to share with the community so that we can all grow together because ego is definitely a different and unique journey for all of us. 
We are so grateful that you joined us on another episode of the Heart Leader Podcast, where heart and mind align. I am Amber, your host, and joined by co-host Austin on this episode. And this wraps up this month's focus on ego. Next month, we will be diving into transparency and how transformation is possible through transparency. Again, if you have not downloaded the Ego Alignment Journal, it is available completely free through the Heart Leader Toolbox. There will be a link underneath this video, or you can find it by going to suivera.org. Another really interesting and amazing development, if you know somebody that you feel would be a great individual to be on the Heart Leader podcast, we would love to hear from you. You can submit to be a guest or submit someone that you think would be a great guest through the Heart Leader website, which is available again through suivera.org, or we can put another link down below and it'll make it very easy for you to click. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you in the Suivera community. You've been listening to the Heart Leader Podcast with your host, Amber, where heart and mind align. Tune in weekly as we take a deeper dive into what it means to be a heart leader. Ready to take the next step? Join us and over 1 million people worldwide who've united in creating this global movement of love. Become a heart leader for today and tomorrow. Learn more and connect with us at suivera.org.